have the biggest MLS signing <laughs> to date, sixteen million dollar for the third time transfer you mean? for the third time <laughs> from a club in Argentina, Velez, Tiago Amada. Uh, most fans probably have read about uh, him and um, some of the headlines that, that weren't in his favor as he, he made his way over. Um, he's currently trying to get his visa in place, so hopefully we could see him this weekend, but it doesn't feel likely. Yeah, just to clarify, I know out there there's been a lot of gossip and rumors and whatever. He was um, a person of interest in a... Um, in a, a sadly in a, in a sexual assault but um as far as i can tell from all the readings um he wasn't actually involved or whatever he may have been a witness to a group of people and he might have had knowledge of the person but they arrested the person um who actually was the one who committed the crime um, who's now in jail he was never interviewed he was never uh, he's prosecuted, he's never but, charged or yeah. interviewed, but yeah, it was evidently one of the assistant coaches of the right, that exactly. was on the run for several months. So they too. thought a number of players were named as person of interest because they had knowledge of what he was doing or his yeah. whereabouts or whatever. Um, but you know, good on Atlanta United for doing um, their due diligence, and and that's what held up. Uh, if you remember the podcast last year, we talked about it a lot for a whole year. It was rumored and was coming, it was coming, not coming, whatever. But that's what the due diligence was about. They were making sure there was no skeletons in that closet. Yeah. And, you know, that, that that's the ultimate thing. You know, he wasn't ever charged or even interviewed. And they waited that out uh, right. before they, they made the signing, even though they had the rights to sign him kind of squared away. So let's talk about him as a player. As a player, uh, you know, I think if you – any of these players from Argentina, the best I can do is go look at some YouTube clips. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this guy is the youngest player that we've brought over that has experience, right? So he has, you know, a good year and a half more and a lot more minutes of actual professional playing time than Ezekiel right. Barco had coming over. Uh, obviously younger than a PT Martinez. Um, so he's got a lot more upside. Um, this is, is a, he 20 now. I think he's just 20. Yes. Okay. And you know, some of my concerns are, he, you know, his kind of voice that he doesn't want to be in the MLS. He already wants to be in Europe. Um, <laughs> by by all accounts, he would probably already be there if we weren't in this weird pandemic um, is, is kind of my hunch. And and also if he hadn't have um, got tied up in this uh, situation yeah, with the, with the, uh, the, the case that was going on in, in Argentina. So, you know, I think it's a multitude of things, but this kid's a real talent, obviously. Yeah, I mean, um, he has 25 or 27 goals in the top division in Argentina yeah. um, and a, num a number of assists. Um, he was one of the stars on their under-23 team that played in the Olympics with Barco. Yeah. Um, and he has one? maybe two full international call-ups, yeah. right? And which he was called up to the full Argentinian national team um, at 18, right? Or 19. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's a lot of weight on his young is, shoulders, yeah. but um, those are serious credentials, right? Yeah. And I didn't um, pay attention to him during the Argentinian under 23 um, game. Or was that, was that in the world cup? Or no, no, in the Olympics. In the Olympics, sorry. Yeah, with Barco. The, yeah, we watched a couple of those games, and I wish I could, you know, go back and remember, but I, I yeah. don't have them recorded or anything. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, he should be really good in transition. Isn't like a huge goal scorer, but goal scorer, but that's an area that hopefully he develops um, a, a little bit more of his finishing product. I mean, that comes with experience. Yeah, some of the breakdown people were talking about. He scored and assisted mostly in transition moments. Um, so. You know, I don't think we should be expecting him to, you know, break down defenders and dribble by three or four people and create or whatever. But, you know, to be honest with you, outside of Messi, who is doing that? Yeah. Right. And, um, you know, um, Miggy Almiron, who was, you know, arguably the best player ever to wear an Atlanta United jersey, you know, most of his moments came in transition. So, yeah. um, you know, if he can even come close to those heights, we would be ecstatic. So we also got another defensive midfielder uh, from Minnesota, correct? Correct. Osvaldo Alonso, is it, am I pronouncing that correct? Osvaldo Alonso, correct, okay. yeah. And he actually, he was a teammate of Pineda's, right, oh, really? at Seattle, right? So Pineda was, um, you know, finishing up his career, and Osvaldo was sort of in the middle of his career. Um, they were actually played together for a season or two in Seattle, 
Um, you know, he's he's quite old. I think he's uh, 36. Yeah. Um, he's a vet. So yeah, wh- what, what, do, what do you expect from him as, as far as minutes or anything? You know, like when we, in a perfect world, he's our, you know, um, B-side, you know, defensive center midfield. So giving Sosa occasional break, um, you know, when we've played a big game and we're playing a weaker team after that, you know. Um, but, you, don't, you don't think that that's going to be more of like a Amar Sadiq or a Hyman type of thing when Sosa is not available or you see them more in front of Sosa? I see them more in front of Sosa. So I see... Um, you know, I see Osvaldo as the the Sosa alternative, and I see um, Heinemann um, or even Asedic competing against Jose to, um for the other center midfield spot. Yeah. Um, the other interesting signing with George Bello having got, been gone uh, to the Bundesliga is uh, it was like Andrew Gutman. Yeah, Gutman was so Gutman two years ago was with Cincinnati, and then then we signed him, and then we loaned him out to New York. Um, and he was terrific. I mean, he was really one of the best left backs in all of MLS. So he's coming here with a couple of years of MLS experience as a real top player already. He should have zero problem slotting into the MLS. Yeah. So I'm interested to see how he plays. Um, yeah. I, I, to be honest with you, I'm expecting him to be a slight step up from Bello only in that. So Bello is such an exciting talent. You say, all right, well, Bello is the left back sometimes for the U S national team. And that's true, but that's a, a wing back flying up role. Right. Um, and he clearly, I don't expect Gutman to be that dynamic going forward, but I, I th- suspect that Gutman is going to be a better defender. Yeah. I almost feel like, um, you know, going back to who is our MLS champ left back, um, that, uh, oh, Garza. Garza. Like, you know, again, yeah, somebody who's comfortable sitting back and playing defense um, but isn't afraid to overlap, a, you know, a Moreno or whoever's up a little further up the field. I think you can do. expect him to be every bit as good as Garza was. Yeah. Yeah. So I, if, if that's the case, I'm, I'm excited. He stays at home base when he sees the green in front of him, t- take the space. So, and in preseason, honestly, his um, his deliveries were absolutely terrific. You know, um, not as dynamic – um, taking on players and getting in the box probably won't score like Bello could. Um, although Bello sometimes missed easy <laughs> chances. Um, but from this flat out standpoint of being wide and serving in a ball, I think it might even be better than Bello. And on the other side, we've got a player who we had on loan and we've now made a permanent offer to, which is Ronald Hernandez, uh, Joseph Martinez, countryman from Venezuela. Right. I don't know how long the contract was for, but I'm really happy we actually signed him. I think he is, as, as you and I have discussed, actually, you know, a better right back than Lennon and uh, hopefully kind of our defensive minded person on that side of the field. Yeah. Um, you know, I think there's some controversy, you know, about. Brooks Lennon being the guy, the starter guy. I mean, I think you and I have been on the Hernandez bandwagon as much as possible. Obviously, we haven't seen him play that much. But when he has played, I thought he was terrific. I thought, again, he was better defensively. And to be honest, just as effective going forward. So he doesn't have maybe the service that um, Lennon has, but he has just as much pace. Um, He... I, to be honest with you, thought he was almost as good an attacking player and a way better yeah. defender. And he's he's a bit younger than Lennon. Am I wrong on that? Um, they're similar. I think Lennon is a little bit older, but they're both mm. right in their prime or okay. going into their prime. Yeah. We also have, I think, our backup keeper in Bobby Shuttleworth. Is that how you pronounce it? <laughs> I have no idea. The MLS vet. I don't know. Is that our guy? What What happened to the Rios kid? Um, I think he's still like 18. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't come here. So yet. yeah, we don't, so this is like our, our guy. If, if Guzan gets hurt, I'm assuming. In fairness, like Rios is still like, he's only like five ten or something. I know, like I, people are like, Oh, he was great at whatever. I'm like, I'm not sure you're an MLS goalkeeper. At we, that saw, height. we saw him in one game. Yeah. You know, well, so. we were, he was amazing. Yeah. Like flying kick, save yeah. running up the field, but maybe a better sweeper than the yeah. <laughs> goalkeeper. <laughs> Um, also, we have uh, Efrain Morales. Uh, he's a homegrown. Right. 17 years old. I, I know his name has been kind of flying around. Another homegrown is Kaleeb Willie. 
Wiley? Yeah, Caleb Wiley. Caleb Wiley. Yeah, okay. he's the he's clearly the backup left back. Well, we have two backup left backs. Um, so Caleb Wiley is the more true left back backup, but um, the other one whose potential is Mulraney is still on the squad. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, you know, in our intro, we, we joke about it, but um, we've got another forward vet that – I'm hoping is going to be our third or fourth deep behind uh, even Conway. Uh, but we signed Dom Dwyer, uh, a, a player from our rival down there in Orlando. All right, let's hear it. Well, <laughs> what do you think about Dom Dwyer, it's Mikey just, Dobbs? It's the definition of insanity. Uh, we, we've gone through <laughs> so many players that are a backup to Joseph Martinez that just don't have uh, any resume of scoring um, in recent history. Adam Jean. Uh, well, now, Kubo in fairness, Torres. Adam Jean never had a history <laughs> of scoring. <laughs> Kubo Torres did at one point, and Dom yeah, but, Dwyer did at one no, point, all of, for sure. But all of these players was long ago, and Dom Dwyer is also one of them. He hasn't scored a goal in the MLS since 2019, so almost like two and a half years. Sure. he has. How do you sign a guy that hasn't scored a goal in two and a half years? In fairness, he did play for Orlando. <laughs> hasn't scored in two and a half years. Why would you bring him on? He's 31 years old. He's not, is he getting better? Um, no, Am but I missing um, something? Why, 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 why? I actually disagree with you. Um, I think he could be an inspired signing. It depends, right? So, so if Dom Dwyer is the starter when Martinez is not available, then we're in big trouble, right? You know, yeah. you saw that. I mean, you know, when Kubo Torres was going to start or whatever and Kubo Torres with the injury, he just had totally lost a step and was terrible. Yeah. Don Dwyer is a little older, but he hasn't lost necessarily a step that way. He's still a very physical player, uh, and I think he can still finish. And so if he were to accept a role of playing five or ten minutes, coming on late, where he can hold the ball up, which he's really good at, or maybe go make a late run into the box and score a goal, I bet he can score still. Hey, look. I'm an, I'm a Dom Dwyer fan now. I mean, <laughs> I have to be. I am just extremely skeptical. But I mean, I'm usually the one saying, "Look, you know, the stats are the stats, and if he hasn't scored in three years, he's never going to score again." But uh, you know, you watch Dom Dwyer, and you don't see that in his game. He looks yeah. like a guy who could score again. Okay, well, hey, let's 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 see how the I'm tape not rolls. sure he's finished. I mean, I think. You know, he clearly lost his mojo a little bit, Orlando, when yeah. he was no longer sort of the starter or whatever. Um, my hope is that he's coming here hungry. And my hope is that he's not coming here well, to be the the backup. He's certainly going to be surrounded by a bunch of superstars. So if he can't get one <laughs> in that situation, God help him. All right. But that being said, right, so you say he's not a, he's not a starter. He shouldn't be going 90 minutes. Should, Definitely not. should Jackson Conway be going 90 minutes? Uh, you know, if if Martinez couldn't start, I'd rather see Jackson Conway yeah. starting and Don Dwyer still okay. coming off the bench. Which leads us to a potential next signing, which yes. I think we just freed up an international slot, or we sold an international slot Why do to you somebody think that for Sosa in Argentina, right? So yeah. there's international slots, which... God only knows. I don't understand it, but Mikey Dobbs might, and you might be able to explain it to the dear podcast listeners. But I think that this is it, right? That um, that the re so um, Ibarra and Sosa are back in South America, and they're getting all their paperwork in order so that they can come here and be and get green cards or something. Yeah. And the idea is that they no longer would be an international. And why would you do that? And especially why would you do that at this moment, you know, a week before the season they bail, yeah. right? Well, they have a reputation of doing this every year now is trying to get all these Argentinian guys, as many of them as they can, yeah a green card before the season starts or right when the season but starts. But usually it's because they just sign them and they're trying to yeah. do that. But these are guys who they've had on the roster for a long time, right? And they're sending them back. And the only reason I can think of is they're doing that so that they can sign one more. Yeah, and so that person is what? Luis Martinez Dupai? Is that how you pronounce it? I think so. Um, and I, what a club? He's, a, he's from an Argentinian club, but don't recall the name off the top Not of my sure. head. Um, but I he, don't know much about him. I thought you maybe tell us a little no, about he's, him. He's a striker. He's 20 years old. Um, I looked at some of the stats. You know, he's got a handful of goals each this last season. So I think he's 
put up like ten goals. So yeah, not tons of goals, but not maybe tons like of goals, eight, but eight. Yeah, but he's he's to young. Score. He's twenty, yeah. right? Yep. And so if you look at any curve yep. of a player coming up as a striker, if you've got eight or ten goals, yep. at that kind of beginning part of your season, this is the guy we want to take the ninety minutes when Joseph Martinez is not available. Hopefully we'll Seems hear. Like it. Hopefully we'll hear some news here. It sounds like we put in like our last offer. It sounds like the you know it's the standard negotiation of whatever. I hope the fax club machine doesn't to, jam, so ex- to speak. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, yeah, I agree with you, and I think that guy, if he's willing to come, you know, I mean, pour on Jackson Conway because of course he's clearly going to be the guy, the second guy. Mm-hmm.